Hey, I'm Dr. Morales and I wanted to make this video to give you my top tips for anyone living with atrial fibrillation. No matter where you where you live, no matter where you are with your atrial fibrillation, these are my top tips that can be helpful for anyone. So number one would be to find the right treatment for you. And that basically goes along with saying, don't settle for treatment options that are not working for you. I can't tell you how many people have reached out to me, whether that's through uh, social media or through email who tell me that their experiences at home uh, have been very uh, subpar in terms of you know their interaction with their doctors is get a medication say here's your medication you got to take the medication better to take the medication than to get a stroke and just deal with it you're stuck with it you're going to have it for the rest of your life without really giving you a whole lot of options about what your treatment options can be when variety, there is usually a lot of treatment options that are available to people for with atrial fibrillation. Medications are very appropriate for, for many people, uh, but there are also procedures as well. Uh, procedures such as a catheter ablation procedure, which can be very helpful for, for a lot of people. And the earlier that is done in somebody when they're first diagnosed with AFib, the better the success rate. In addition, lifestyle modifications such as losing weight or reducing or, uh, or abstaining from alcohol, those things can also be very beneficial. So if you feel that your doctor is really not giving you the right treatment options or not give, telling you all the different potential options that you can have or that treatment is just not working, if he's not willing, to, uh, your doctor is not willing to work with you, then it's always fair to get a, a second opinion and find that right treatment that works best for you, whether that's doing your own research online, such as what you're doing now, or finding another doctor that will give you more treatment options. And that also goes along with seeing an electrophysiologist. Electrophysiologists are the experts in, in atrial fibrillation, like myself. Uh, we've done many procedures on people who have atrial, atrial fibrillation. So it is always key to get an opinion from someone who's an electrophysiologist early as possible in your disease course, because that's when you're really gonna get the main treatment option. So the first thing is really find the right treatment for you and don't settle for whatever it is your doctor may be giving to you if it doesn't appear to be work working for you. Number two tip would be to understand your risk of stroke. Risk of stroke is the most devastating part about ha having atrial fibr fibrillation. And it is the most serious consequences of having atrial fibrillation. Uh, but not everybody's risk of stroke is the same. It's, it's very individualized based on your own individual risk factors. Uh, the most common risk factor scoring system used is called the CHADS VASC risk, sco risk scoring system. You can look it up and figure out what your individual CHADS VASC risk score is and understand how your risk of stroke can be from atrial fibrillation. For the grand majority of people though, the main way to reduce the risk of stroke would be with blood thinning me medication because they work really, really well to re reduce risk of stroke. It can be very important for many people who have atrial fibrillation. But for those people who do not tolerate it, there's also some procedure options as well, which again goes along to find the right treatment option for you and make sure you're discussing with your doctor and make sure they're doing all the best options for you. Third thing would be to find the tr your triggers for atrial fibrillation. Triggers can be very individualized. You know, what the trigger is for me may be different from somebody else or, or another patient. So you really have to be a bit of a detective to know what triggers it off for you. For some people, it may be sleep deprivation. For some people, it may be stress. For some people, it may be very fatty foods, for example, or maybe alcohol. So finding what really sets off your atrial fibrillation uh, can be a very important thing uh, to figure out because that may will significantly reduce the amount of symptoms you're having. And then the fourth thing would be to put an emphasis on lifestyle uh, modifications. Lifestyle modifications, which for a lot of people would be losing weight, but that could also go down to reducing inflammation, uh, reducing blood pressure, having a healthier lifestyle to reduce excess sugar, artificial ingredients. All of these things are not only healthy for your body, but are also healthy for atrial fibrillation. In addition, these lifestyle modifications can also improve the success rate of your other treatment options. So people who end up needing a catheter ablation procedure, for example, under having a, a component of lifestyle modifications as well, improves the success rate of the uh, catheter ablation procedure uh, as well. So they all work well together. So lifestyle modifications are extremely important and can really help uh, your overall treatment plan as well that you have with, with your doctor. So those are my top tips for anyone with atrial fibrillation. Fortunately, when it comes to lifestyle modifications, 
I created the program already that gives you the step-by-step -step plan for everything that you need to improve atrial fibrillation naturally. And that's the Take Control of AFib program. So right underneath this video, there you'll see a link that will take you directly to the sign-up page where you'll be able to see more about the program itself as well as see real-life testimonial from people who have taken the, uh, the program itself. See what they have to say and sign up for the program for yourself.